Mr. Speaker, I rise today to recognize the deep trauma and loss of life perpetuated by systems of oppression here in the United States and globally. Many times I've stood at this dais and affirmed that our destinies are tied. That was clear when protesters took to the streets in the face of police murders, seeking to build a nation where black lives matter. That was clear when our democracy and our lives were put at risk by violent white supremacists who shattered glass and broke doors while wearing anti-Semitic phrases on their chest, carrying the Confederate flag, erecting a noose on the West Lawn. That was clear when students protesting to end poverty and oppression in the streets of Bogota were shot dead. That was clear when families kneeling during this holy month at the third holiest site in Islam were met with tear gas, rubber bullets, and hand grenades. Our destinies are tied. As a black woman in America, I am no stranger to police brutality and state-sanctioned violence. We have been criminalized for the very way we show up in the world. Last summer, when Black Lives Matter protesters took to the streets to demand justice, they were met with force. They faced tear gas, rubber bullets, and a militarized police, just as our Palestinian brothers and sisters are facing in Jerusalem today. Palestinians are being told the same thing as black folks in America. There is no acceptable form of resistance. We are bearing witness to egregious human rights violations. The pain, trauma, and terror that Palestinians are facing is not just the result of this week's escalation, but the consequence of years of military occupation. In Sheikh Jarrah, the Israeli government is violently dispossessing yet another neighborhood of Palestinian families from homes they have lived in for decades. We cannot stand idly and complicitly by and allow the occupation and oppression of the Palestinian people to continue. We cannot